We're back live. You have no idea what happened. A giant water buffalo came running through, uh, <laughs> knocked the camera over. Can I do this theme song again? No. This. Anyway, now, so. Does anyone here, can we tell if we're live? Are we live? You're live, yeah. Definitely. Okay, we're live. All right. All right. Devin says we're live. So, well, the last thing, uh, Jordan, uh, you were going to tell us uh, uh, about a piece that you really. Went out, of, went out of control and really went nuts, and you didn't expect it. Well, if Babe Ruth's first game program that yeah. sold for sixty thousand. That was amazing, and we yeah, sold it to the amazing. guy right years ago. Yep. What did we sell yeah. it to him for? Like six, eight thousand. Eight thousand. We sold the Babe Ruth program from his first game ever as a member of the Red Sox, nineteen fourteen. Yes, yeah. and uh, we sold it to him for eight grand in auction, and was it ten years later or something like that? Yeah. He got 60000 It's a good return. <laughs> yeah. There's your 401k. Uh, also, the 1976 Topps oh. baseball set. Yeah. When a 76 Topps baseball set went for $173,000. Yeah. How much did that guy have invested in that, Jordan? Do you know? Oh, well, less than fifty. Really? Nice. 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 Pretty good. Anyway. All right. So we got some other stuff. Uh, oh, this is so complicated. Anyway, anything coming interesting, Devin? Nothing yet. Of course not. Do you think uh, – did John Guzik hear the comments that we were making earlier? John Guzik he hears, yeah, he hears he everything. Right. Was he really excited? Oh, so excited. You could tell. Now, did he answer the military question? He did, but I did not have it in front of me. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. I say he was in the Marines. No. Oh, he was. He was in the Navy. Yeah. He was like a swabby. Yeah. But that was after he was Was it? A swabby. That's what they call it. Really? Doesn't mean he swabs the decks. Okay. All right. No, he was a general. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effect. Anyway, so uh, what would be the effect of a rare card if someone showed up with a fine containing a few of them? An example: Did the find of the seventy of the seven Ty Cobb fonts? Backs. <laughs> yeah, this is wrong. If this, he actually said seven Ty Cobb fronts with Ty Cobb backs. He's right. I'm wrong. Cause any issues? The values of the ones known up to that point. Can anyone answer that? Anyone out there? Not, I know the answer. No, wait. The question, can you simplify the question a little bit? It's simple. How did the, the how, how, how did the price, he's thinking that did it, did it, did it go down because uh, you found seven Ty Cobb backs. Um, they went up. I don't know. They went up very briefly. But, but that, now they've come down. Yeah, so when they were found, they went up because – it created a market. Oh, yeah, it created it created a buzz. And the market was always there. Yeah, but also the the there was a lot of guys at that time buying really expensive cards, and that were, played, played into that. But there weren't too. seven guys. That's true. You know, I don't no, know. If they all, they didn't they didn't all sell right away. Right. A few of them, the, the higher graded cards sold right away, and then the uh, lower grades sat. But you know, what a beautiful card! What a great card! We what sold a great thing to invest. Remember, in. we sold one at we sold it in auction. One of the first ones. We I, mean, got I do remember that. Thirty yeah. to thirty thousand dollars, something like that, which was crazy. And in the time. same auction, we had the tin that the right, you know, and the that tin is in. actually the tin is now rarer than the card. Yeah, but the tin, the tin still doesn't sell for the kind. I'm of sure a nice tin would sell for fifty thousand or more. There's I'd pay mint. fifty thousand for a really yeah, nice tin. Yeah, there's a mint one out there. Is there? Yeah, there's a beauty. Halper had it. And I think somebody bought it. I think Ray him. Holland then had it too, didn't he? Didn't we buy one from Ray Holland? Not the a nice, long time not ago. The nice one. Maybe I, I don't remember, but not the we nice did. one. Halper had yeah. the nice one, and uh, the card came in it. And yeah. David Fickelstein bought it. Okay. Yeah, remember he was like a he was like twelve years old at the time. He was, and he was older than that. But he wanted the the it was a live auction, and he wanted the uh, the podium had a, a little sign that said Leland's, and he wanted it to go with the card. It was back in like. 91, probably? Yeah, probably early 90s. Anyway. Um, okay, not accounting for price increases. Is there a piece that you've sold in the past but would love to have back? Anything you regretted selling, regretted buying, anything you dump, any piece you felt you handled wrong? This is too depressing. I'm not answering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is yes. <laughs> of course, you know, we sell, we sell a lot of stuff. And... Things don't always work out, but the but the overall is just tremendous. I mean, our batting average is pretty amazing. Uh, we've never had anything that just completely, you know. Yeah. 
crapped I, out. I mean, we have. We have. What? Can we get an example? I don't know. I, like like you said, it's too negative. I don't want to go into it. But I don't know what the last segment, if we, what we were saying. Well, but we never sold um, anything that was worth uh, uh, $100,000 for $10,000. No, no, that didn't happen. Yeah, we sold things but, for 100000 that We sold for eighty or seventy, but never. Right. But I think it goes back to what I was saying before. I understand when consigners get, uh, you know, consigners have a lot of expectations come with consigning things. I myself, I know when I sell something, or it, it really is difficult to, you know, this is a piece you bought because you liked it, and you, or you bought it because you, you thought that you were going to make money on it, and then you turn around and you don't make money on it, or you lose money on it, and it's upsetting. So I can see why consigners get upset when they lose money on something or don't make what they were going to make. Yeah. But, uh, you and know, it, it happens. It happens to us. We're it, in it every yeah. day, and it happens to us. And it's funny. The people that paid the least are generally more upset about not getting what they expected. Very true. It's because they true. had no yeah. investment in it since. Right. It's very strange. I mean, if you paid nothing for it, it shouldn't matter. Well, of course it matters. As long as you do a good job, that's really all right. that matters. What do you think, Jordan? Are you, are you not speaking for us? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I agree. I don't really – like to be conservative with estimates so consigners don't get their hopes up and expect the world so if you think something's worth twenty thousand you could be a little conservative and leave a lot of room for potential and upside that's very good a lot of people don't do that they'll say anything to get the item uh and it only creates it's not good it creates a lot of bad blood yeah that's one of the things that we combat every day yeah there's some we, other we big do. auction houses that do that Big companies, don't Big say auction houses. Big companies, uh, McDonald's. <laughs> uh, one of them but, just texted me. But we, you know, we do come back. It's a lawyer's letter. We, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, certified us, so you can ignore it. So funny. Um, we, no, but we are do, we still on? <laughs> <laughs> We do battle that every day. I mean, that's a big that's a big thing. We're always realistic yeah. with people. I'm sorry. I think I think we're realistic with people, and um, you know, it comes back and it, it definitely. Uh, of course, even being realistic, there are people that come at the end of the day and they say, "Well, I thought it was going to get more." Or sometimes we think we're going to get more. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, the saddest thing is that see, we really have our heart in this, and we care a lot more than you might think, even though we have not so much financial stake. I mean, you know, we have a small percentage versus the owner has a, a you know, much, much larger expense, uh, percentage, but Sorry. we kind of live and die by it. So, uh, you know, we, we're disappointed, which is, which is tough, but the, actually the point I get back to it, the point I want to make is that we very rarely hear from people that are really, really happy that no. they went crazy. They, they just do it and they sell it and we get our commission and they figure, oh, okay, they're, they're fine. But it's nice to hear it once in a while, which we do once in a while, but very rarely. But when somebody's unhappy, oh, my God. You hear them all. Then we hear it. All right, this is too negative. But that's only natural. Yeah. All right, so, uh, okay, what is this? Uh, are reserves really necessary anymore? Now, this is a very good, that's a very good question. Uh, is the situation would say in order to get prices, you're going to have an auction when every piece has no reserve and an opening bid of a dollar. What do you think about that, Jordan? Um, hidden reserves as a buyer. No, I'm not talking about hidden. Sure. He's saying, do you really need a reserve? Like, we put our reserves right there. Yeah. But do you really need it? Is the market so strong that you could start everything at a dollar and it would be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if something's worth $100,000, no, at least no dealer's not going to let it go for anywhere close to that. They'll still make their money and bid up to a certain amount. And then collectors come in at the end. But... Yeah, if you have a hundred thousand dollar bet and the starting bid's a dollar, it's not going to sell for five, ten, or even twenty thousand. It's It'll true. still get to where it needs to go. Well, in general, we seem to have we have very low reserves. That's our motto uh, or our business plan. It doesn't always work out that way. Some people they want a high reserve and we're willing to take the risk. But if it was a whole auction of doing that, we wouldn't do it. However, I believe that if we started everything at a dollar, you probably end up at the same price. Yeah, I mean, we've done it. We've had mistakes where we mark things in the in the copy a dollar when we when we have to go back and change something in the copy just so that comes up so we can do a search. And we started at a dollar, right? Two thousand dollar item, and it still sells for two thousand or twenty five hundred bucks. So yeah. 
I think you can start at a dollar. It's just a starting point. I mean, it's it's not even meant as a guide. It's just a starting point, sort of, to get things rolling. Yeah, you got to start, uh, gotta you gotta start, start somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Every, it would look a lot if we started everything at a dollar. But I guess there'd be no reason to really even put in if something doesn't have a reserve, a high reserve on it, to put it in at zero and just let people do it. But uh, it's been going on that way for so long that yeah. you know it's just sort of a, a one of those given things that uh, that we have going on. So what you were saying was that. Sometimes we have uh, what's called a placeholder. We don't know what the reserve is going to be yet because someone's got to go back in and tell us or we're not sure about something, so we'll put a dollar in. So I, what you were saying was that we'll, leave the, we'll put the dollar in and then we'll forget to put the right. final reserve right. in. So we do have a lot of things that start at a dollar, and you're saying that doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. So that, a difference. that's kind of interesting. You All have right. a question if you're interested. Yeah, let's hear. Uh, from uh, John Borzamato. John Borzamato. How you doing, John? Uh, guys, I collect Yankee single signed baseballs other than Ruth or Gehrig. What is the next tier of ball in that category that you have rarely seen? I'm having a ridiculous time finding a good Elston Howard. Jordan, you know your autographs. That's your specialty. What do you, have you ever had Elston Howard? Have we ever had an Elston Howard while you've been here? We have not, no. No, really? A single signed? I thought we had one. <laughs> 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 but you haven't been here that long. You've yeah, only no. been here for a couple of years. No, but if yeah. we have one right now, we Not we right don't now. have one right now. No. No. Okay, no. He's very very tough. What what year did he die? Eighty seven. No, no, no. Seven? earlier than that. Earlier than 81? that. Eighty one. Yeah. Let's look it up. What year did Elston Howard uh, die? Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. Okay, Hef's betting nineteen eighty. I'm saying nineteen eighty. You, uh, Jordan, where are you going to go? Watson. What do you think? Eighty one. Eighty one. I'm going to take eighty two. Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. And Hef wins a. No, I want some of that candy you have on your desk. Tape gun. Go get me some of that candy, please. Go get me some of that candy. Oh, I won. All right, I'll get you some. All right, thank you. All right, hold on. So I would say that I would say the biggest thing with Yankee balls is uh, if you're looking for the the newer stuff, I would say like Munson and Howard. Howard's definitely tougher than Munson. Don't know why, because he was a coach. He was around for a long time. And, uh, you know, he did, did pass away in 1980, which was only a year after when Munson passed away. Munson's but, too uh, high. Um, Munson's not too high. No, yes, it's he very is. rare. There's he went candy. up Thank very you. fast. You want one, Jordan? Oh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Green one. That's it. the worst one. Did you take some out of here? I ate them. All right. Um, Jolly Ranchers. You guys so, want one? Here. But if you're looking, if you're looking at a um, – Take one. Red. I got red. Okay, no. Uh, so if you're looking at it from a standpoint of like tough, you know, other tough Yankees, tough Howard, Yankees, Howard's single sign ball. Howard's definitely tough. And if you had a near mint, probably Howard underrated ball too on an American League ball, you could be talking twenty or thirty thousand. Holy uh, crap! Yeah, a, a, a mint one on an official ball. Wouldn't you say, Jordan? Wouldn't you agree with that? A yeah. Howard ball, a, a near mint one. Near mint, yeah. Um, great. But there's some other really tough Yankees, like Tony Lazari on the single sign ball is really tough. Very tough. Um, some of the other Hall of Famers. Because most of the Lazaris you see are early. They're from the 20s and 30s. And how right. many? You know, he didn't. He didn't live. He didn't. No, he lived into the 40s. That's it. Yeah, you, and you, so. you don't see anything. Yeah. Yeah. Who else were you going to say? I'm sorry. Um. Just, like Lazari, who else can you think of Yankees, uh, Jordan, that are that are tough? Who's the swing Miller guy? Huggins. Miller Huggins is impossible. Yeah, yeah that's you'd um, have you could get fifty grand for a really nice Miller Huggins ball, maybe. Yeah, but believe it or not, the funny thing is, there's more of a demand for an Elston Howard single sign than there is for a Miller Huggins. Well, like there's a good possibility. It's a different market. People don't know, even though Elston Howard's a little bit obscure and he's a non Hall of Famer. We gotta go. What? Okay. Jordan's gotta go. He's gotta make the train. We don't want to make – we're going out, you know, home at 11 o'clock at night. Actually, Jordan lives in um, Topeka, Kansas, and he flies in and out every every day because <laughs> he loves this job so much. Now, Jordan lives in Brooklyn because he's cool. He's a hipster. Jordan, thank you. Love having you. This is a great man. This is a good guy. You want to talk to somebody that knows something. He's young. He's he's mean. He's lean. He's a machine. <laughs> Thank Jordan. Okay, Jordan. All right, just All right. don't look at his pants when he gets up. They're a little off color. Oh, I like that. He did. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Be safe. Be safe. There goes Jordan. He's gone. All right. There goes Jordan. He's gone. All right. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. We have a question from uh, Randy Kaplan. That was a very good question. 
Uh, the oh, PSA, I love Randy Kaplan. The PSA 9 Bobby or rookie is unreal. Is it new to the hobby? Not sure if you saw this question earlier because of technical difficulties. Is that Randy Kaplan, the uh, presidential ball collector? Anyway, tell Randy, you're the presidential ball collector, my old friend? Anyway, so anyway. What was the question? <laughs> is the your card. Is, is it fresh your, to the hobby? I'll answer. The hobby. Is that okay? Sure. All right. The your card is fresh to the hobby. Uh, it's never been sold before. We have it right here. Yeah. This is the back. There's the. This is the back. <laughs> this is the back. Yeah. Okay. Here's the front. That's beautiful. Can we see it? You can actually. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. This is. So it, it's never been. Uh, it's never been sold raw. It's never been sold graded. This is the first time it's being sold. Yeah, and that is. Uh, it's a '66, '67 Topps USA rookie. It's a test issue. It's uh, what was it, what is it? A hundred times rarer than a regular or rookie, maybe five hundred times rarer. Um, uh, well, um, they made a subset, a small set, a limited set. Parkhurst was generally doing hockey, and Topps was selling in the USA. Wait, I don't remember the story now. This is the first. Well, you got to keep you away from hockey. All right, let's move on. Okay, but that was a good question. Yeah, that was a good question. No, it's it is fresh, and that that actually to me it gives it a little more appeal because if it was out there before, yeah, you know, we'd have a price to put it put on it. This is going to be really interesting what this card sells for because because nothing you know it's a one of one. So you know we can we can look at the eights that have sold, the sevens that have sold, but nothing in this you know nothing in the nine has sold. So it makes it interesting. Now wait, now wait. I'm sorry. Let me I'm, go. I'm, you just I'm want ready. to jump in. Bad. I'm sorry. Just wait. Just wait. I have one more sentence to say. Yes, sir. So it does make it to me. It makes it m much more desirable being uh, being a fresh card rather than being something that's bounced around for a while. Okay, now you may go. Thank you. Thank you, Sensei. Um, anyway, so the one point I was going to make, and I thought about this today. I was talking to a client who's interested in it. Is that how many cards that are mainstream important rookie cards that there's a pop one? There's only one card in the in the highest population in the highest grade in the population of that card the, even the 52 mantle which there are which is, there is a psa 10 there is no psa 10 or 9.5 in this the only mantle that's a psa 10 is three of them so what other major card uh um a ruth rookie you know this you know uh, uh you know uh, Whatever. <laughs> Any other major player. I don't know. No, one of ones and rookie cards are few and far between. And how many are there? Yeah, if any. Uh, there are a few. There are a few. Okay. You'd have to look it up, but there are a few. All right. Any other questions? Thanks, Deb. <laughs> what do we got here? Oh, this is this was an interesting story. We're going to talk about Jordan behind his back. Yeah. He should be here for this one. We have to hold him accountable. I know. <laughs> Maybe that's why he left. Sorry, Jim. Because he knew we were going to talk. Because <laughs> he knew we were going to talk about this. This is Jordan. From, now he left. He's gone. He ran out the, he's, yeah. he's hiding in the back. <laughs> this is a guy named Jim, Jim K. Now, I like this story because it shows that we're not perfect. And also, the really interesting thing is we all have different expertise. Hef has his specialties. I have mine. Jordan has his. So unless you're talking to the, exactly the right person, you may not get the same level of knowledge. And here's one where we screwed it up. Now, there was no... We didn't screw it up. No, wait, there's no we. Jordan screwed Jordan it up. Jordan screwed it up. <laughs> but he really didn't understand it. It's really, you know, it's tough. That was funny. Thank you. Basically, this guy called up. Jim. Nice guy, Jim K. And he was, first of all, he says, he asks, what value does all 21 Secretariat programs have? I have 21 and 19 are mint. Two are track used. That's interesting. That's kind of weird. What does that mean? I admit it's probably written in and it's, okay. it's been touched. It wasn't like on the track and like a horse. <laughs> it's thinking, like, yeah. No, <laughs> like uh, Ron Turcott had it stuck in his pocket <laughs> during the race. <laughs> Giddy up. Anyway, so. I understand the, the, pr Yeah. What? Yeah, I, we, don't, we both do. And everyone else does. We can I was move just on. making a joke. That was good. I didn't want to offend you. Okay, Jim. Okay. Jim's already mad at us. Priest to the Derby, his programs are flop. I'll make a point real quick. If you don't admit your mistakes in this business, you're done. You've got to be, you got to have a thick skin and you got to just, if you make a mistake, move on, admit it and move on. And we do it all day. 
because this is not an exact science. This is a, you know, it's a business, but it's not exact authenticity and things like that. And grading, it's up to um, opinion. And if people don't want something, don't like something, you take it back. Yeah. It's pretty, well, if they don't just, if they just don't like it, if they get yeah. it and two years later they say, yeah. I'm tired of this, yeah, no, they're not they're not going to take it back. But we'll buy it back or we'll sell it. We'll know, buy it back. They, may not, they might get more than they paid or less. Right. That's right. But we'll put it in an auction. Yes. Um, uh, previous to the Derby, his programs are non-existent. I don't know if that's true, but it seems to me not too many people have these as a set. There aren't too many sets out there. And he, Jordan valued these at a few thousand dollars, and, and the guy went nuts. And justifiably so. There are some programs, some of the secretary programs are really rare. I've seen very varying prices on the Kentucky Derbies based on condition. I saw there was a set went for like $6,000, which is ridiculous. That's really crazy. But, you know, they'll go for a couple thousand or a few thousand. We, you know, and the prices are, are very valuable. But it's funny. We just sold a, a Kentucky Derby program, was it, or a Belmont that Penny Chenery owned? Oh, Yeah. The owner yeah, of Secretary and it sold for how much did it sell for? A lot, like thirteen thousand dollars. Do you remember or, what was it, Shakespeare? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was the it was the Kentucky Derby. It was the Kentucky the Derby. As well. I think the it ticket, had the ticket. I okay. The ticket was and it was about well. thirteen thousand. Right. Yeah. 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 It was incredible. And that's because it had provenance and it came directly from Penny. And you know, we had a letter from the Secretary of Foundation, and uh, yeah, that's really special. But even some of those programs, those really early ones, can be worth as much as five thousand dollars because they're so rare and secretary stuff is, is like gold. And it's yeah. Amazing. I mean, if there's a horse you want, if there's a ball player you want, it's Babe Ruth. If there's a horse you want, it's secretary. Hockey, Bob, your Muhammad Ali in boxing. <laughs> there's a, you know, it, it, that's your goal. Yeah, secretary stuff is so let's get to the bottom of this. The, the programs that Jim has, um, he has a complete set. What would you value in that? 19 to 21. <laughs> it's really funny. I have to literally sit down and add it up. But I would think it, it's got to be worth 10, 20 grand at least. Yeah. Something like some that. Some of those are incredibly rare. So if the you rare call, ones that collectors aren't, aren't going to have are, are the ones that are worth as much or more than triple I find. So we, we have clients who would love to have a, a, yeah. a partial set. So Absolutely. And it's funny. We're, like, we're the biggest sellers of uh, vintage uh, horse racing in the country. And if you call up here and they tell you your stuff is worth – now, we're not trying to buy it. We're trying to get it on consignment. So he had, there was no intent. He just didn't know. And he quoted a price of twenty five or thirty five hundred as a value. Guy went ballistic. I'd be upset too. Right. Right. Yes. Sorry. So it was a, Sorry, a mistake. Ron. A mistake that we made. And we, Sorry, Jim. A mistake that we made, and we'll take uh, we'll take the blame for it. I'll tell you what. Give us the programs. We'll do it for zero percent commission, and we'll put it on two full pages in the program. We'll put it in all our press releases. We'll definitely get a, a some publicity on it. We get more for Secretariat. This guy here gets some amazing secretariat stuff directly from uh, the family, from the Secretariat Foundation. What are the couple of things you sold? The, uh, the Belmont uh, uh, saddle? Uh, uh, saddle cloth. Yeah. Uh, we had the... Um, the um, What'd that go for? I don't remember. It was Price over 100, right it was now, over 100 right? grand. And uh, who Close bought it? One. It was a public who bought it? No, it's not public. Okay. It. it went to a really rich guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, a couple other things we sold for a lot of money. Yeah, we had the horseshoe. One of the oh, horseshoes. yeah, the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby horseshoe. What, what did that, that sell for? Seventy-five thousand. Yeah, about 80, that. 000. Seventy-eight. Yeah. You got something over there? The horseshoe. Eight. Mm. Good job. Yeah. Can I have another one of the Jolly Ranch? No, I don't want anyone. <laughs> right here. I want a different kind. Blue. No, a different kind of candy. Uh, what do we got? Didn't we have dots over there? Are there dots over there? Yeah, could be. All right, so that's Jill Lane, you got something over there? Yeah, cookies. Cookies. You want a cookie? No, I'm good right now. You want a cookie? No. <laughs> so that pretty much takes care of the, the whole um, Kentucky Derby. <laughs> the, the, the Kentucky Derby fiasco. Yeah. So let's talk. Now, about how one. many sports firms that are so confident in their knowledge and in their track record, Secretariat, that they come on the show and talk about a mistake they made? We're confident. We know what we're doing, and we make mistakes. And that's reality, but we always make right by it. I think every mistake we make, too, we learn from it. So, That's right. I mean, it's so important to actually – it's important to make mistakes and know you're making the mistakes because 
we learn a lot from them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be uh, open to anything. We just think we were perfect, and we're not. And, uh, so, and what did we learn from this one? Uh, we learned not to let Jordan answer the phone. That is exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> we put a 25-year-old kid on the phone, and you know what? He He's does an amazing yeah, he does job. Do. He does do great. Okay, what else we got? I got one right here. All right, Devin, tell us uh, what you got. Another from Randy. Randy! Uh, is this Randy Kaplan again? Yes. Josh, when are you going to get me a box of 1973 Topps Creature Feature? You'll die laughing cards. Ah. Not that, it's not that hard to find. I, I have a box. I'll sell them mine. mine. Mine is a little, um, I got to look at what I paid for it. Okay. We're talking about. I know exactly what they are. I think I have a seller box. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they're all seller. I, I don't remember. I have to see it. Where's that uh, Horrors of War poster so we can... Um, oh, let's talk about that. We need to talk about some stuff. Horrors of Hyro. <laughs> but we can, we, can definitely, we can definitely find... A bunch of other questions. Oh, we do. Okay, yeah. let's do them quick. Yeah. Uh, first off, Jillian's getting a lot of shout-outs. People want to see Jillian. Oh, Jillian, wow. come on over! Wow. <laughs> we, this is the new... This is the... Jillian is wonderful. I, I've known her for two days... And actually, I really don't know because I don't make. Come uh, on, Jillian. Have a oh, seat. look at her. She's got some beautiful hair here. I'm going to you my seat. Hi, guys. Jillian, you're going to sit down with us? No, no. Have, come on over. What? Yeah. No, I'm getting the post. I'm getting the post. Oh, you're getting the post. No, 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 no. Let them get the post. Jillian, come on in. Don't worry. I won't bite you. Here. Tom got me another chair. Oh, man. What's that? No pressure. No. Jillian. Um, which brings up something from the auction. Now, now, wait. Now, Jillian, do you want to stay here no, a little let's... bit? Or... Are you okay? You're I'm welcome. Okay. You can sit here as long right. as you like. Okay. Uh, what are they? What are they saying about Jillian? Devin. Oh, uh, be well, nice. Everybody's just excited to see Jillian on camera. Wow. <laughs> now, how do they know okay. she's here? Uh, I would be. That would be from Robert Rosen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Robert Rosen. <laughs> yeah, Robert Rosen. The enemy. My mm -hmm. Rob. Yeah. Okay, we got uh, we got some other questions here. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the horrors of war, though, because this is in an auction and. Okay. Uh, Josh, I mean, you can talk. You can talk about this poster. I love it. It's one of my favorite picks. But you, the it's one, a, you you stood up, and you raised your hand in that auction, and you were aggressive, and you bought this. Yeah, and actually, there were a few different styles. But this is like this is one of the coolest of the styles. I mean, there's just so much going on in it, and there's so much color, and it's kind of like you you do that. You're just doing that. Um, yeah. And it's um and it's a window ad. This thing was actually meant to be stuck onto windows yeah. in um, Five and Dimes yeah. and, uh, you know, different stores that sold cards. So it was the meant to be stuck. Actually, the glue is on, actually, on the, actually on the edges. So it would be stuck on the inside of the window, and you'd be able to see it from the outside. This yeah. one was never used. Uh, inside looking out. This one was never used. Oh, it's, and, uh, it's so beautiful. The colors are just amazing. And it's showing this this uh, Chinese village being ravaged no. by the Japanese. Right, it was pre-World War, no. Ours War, a lot of people think it's World War II, right. but it was pre, it was done in 1938, so it was pre-World yeah. War II. It's the 36-37 Sino-Japanese War. Do you think Which, Rob Rosen knew that? Rob knows, doesn't know crap know. about anything. I know. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's one of yeah, my favorite Yeah, that's the problem pieces. they got over there. Those guys don't know nothing. They gotta look everything up in a book. We know stop it. Stop now, stop now. All right, okay. Um, so that's one of my favorite pieces in the auction. The colors, the rarity, Are you embarrassing you the scarcity. No, no, no. So, um, so there you go. Hard war. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So Scott Wellring asks. Uh, yeah. Speaking of programs, yeah. Jillian's gonna say goodbye. Bye guys. <laughs> Thank you, Jillian. Jillian's wonderful. She's our newest employee. We poached her from Heritage. No. We didn't. Anyway, so uh, Scott Wyrick asks. I know Scott. How you doing, Scott? Speaking of programs, Mike, uh, would you like to see a racing program with Jack Gunn's auto? In? Sure, sure. Now, Josh, I have to teach you a little bit about this. Thank you. Okay. I like to learn. So Jack Gunn was the racing promoter of all promoters in Pennsylvania, like the Don King of. of he was like the Don racing. King of 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 local dirt track racing in Pennsylvania. Let's, let's move forward a little bit. And he really didn't it. make a national name for himself. He's he, a handsome he, guy. Look at this guy. I've known him since he was a kid. Um. All right. Let's talk about the racing. So Jack Gum was a local promoter. It's a great name, by the way. Yeah, the it is. Day. And and he horse changed racing, auto racing. Actually, he changed his name. I forget what his what is. It, it wasn't Gun, but he changed it to Gun. It was a, it was something similar to Gunn. Jack Bullitt. changed it. No, it wasn't Jack Bullet. But he was a local promoter um, 
who passed away in the early 80s, but he was very, very influential on the local scene, and he was around forever and did some incredible things for local racing. So, wow, cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love to see it if you can send me a private message with a picture of it. That'd be I'll great. Put it right on here. Put it right on there. It. Let yeah. everyone see. I'd love to see it. I don't know how this works because I usually don't come on. That's now. okay. Uh, uh, and uh, you, you have a lot of interest in racing, don't you, Half? You I have, love racing. I love racing. Half yeah. is, i got to tell a quick story, is that one of my family members, uh, uh, I told them a long time ago, I said, my business partner, Mike Hefner, uh, is really into auto racing. You know, he's got a car and, you know, he says, and this guy does it too. He's a, a stock car guy up in Maine. And he says, yeah, I, I drive my own car and this and that. And he says, I have to, I said, no, my, my guy has a, uh, has, has a driver and this and that. So the, it was funny. Uh, the, the last time actually my sister talked to him, he said, yeah, she said, yeah, that guy's, uh, my brother's partner Hef is still doing the, the, the stock car racing. Mike Hefner, he goes, Mike Hefner? You mean from Hefner Auto Racing? He's like, yeah. Oh, my God. So you're like a real big deal down there, aren't you? I don't like to think of myself as a big deal. We like to know. think of him as a big deal. I, I don't like Mike, that. big deal, Hefner. Stop, stop. You're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing me. That's okay. Stop. We don't mind. All right, stop. what do you got? What else? Is the Sunny Liston robe in the background coming up in a future auction? Yes, Absolutely. It is. With that robe, actually, it's amazing. It, it, Tom, it holds come on over. over. It holds the record now for the item taking the longest to write up. <laughs> One copywriter, Eric Diadamo, spent four days writing this row. Another person we poached this from Heritage. Four <laughs> days writing this row. No, don't, think, don't take it off the thing. You can read it better with the thing on. <laughs> what is this? Eric, does that sound funny? <laughs> Eric do, you know, do you understand what this, what this design on the back means? Yeah, it's a sun. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. It is a great piece. Wow. But it should be sunny with a U. This is beautiful. This is all um, this is all embroidered directly on. This is all embroidered. I mean, this is beautiful. And this came. Oh, we have the poster from the fight, don't we? Eric, what uh, what fight was it? Photo match to. Oh, on the name. Henry it's all Clark. custom made, custom tailored. That was what sixty eight. Was it late sixty eight? Nineteen sixty eight. And where's the poster? Eric, you writing that up too? House is already written. Eric's getting mad. Is he? Yes. <laughs> okay. Ooh, Can you is. see that? So that's the... Oh, he doesn't like it. I'm sorry, Eric. Sorry, Eric. Um, so this will be in the Spring Classic auction, along with uh, an incredible collection of boxing memorabilia. That's the little light is here. That we... Up top. Uh, up top. No. No, it's too far. Yeah. Anyway. It's probably the best robe robe that we have in the auction yeah. but uh there's an, there's just an incredible amount of box and stuff in the spring classic auction this would be one of the better exactly. pieces one of the better pieces actually eric is one of our top copywriters whoa tom and he's uh he's actually probably you can see it Devin. before uh after you me and half good? yeah you see it fine you can see it yeah, yeah. You can't see around it. this is this is the actual fight i want to make Hulster a point i know eric is mad that we're giving him crap but uh I got to say, Eric Diadam, after half of myself, is probably the most knowledgeable guy at Leland's. He's definitely the most passionate. There's no doubt about that. We're all passionate. I mean, next to you and I. Yeah. He's very passionate. But, you know, it's area. amazing. Do you see what was going on today? It's very rare that both Hef and I are in the office. And it was so much action. It was so interesting that, in a sense, it was, like, hard to get any work done because everybody was so excited. You know, like, it's an exciting time to be here. It's well, an exciting Yes. Place. Sorry. It's just when everyone's here and we're bringing out fresh material and Ugh. everybody's looking at it, it's hard not to look at it. Like I get mad at some of our employees because they get distracted very easily, but this stuff is, you know, it's distracting. It's just the nature of the business and the nature of the stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, when something like that robe comes in, um, everybody stops. wants to see it. And rightfully so. That that robe des deserves a lot of attention. Yeah. Where are you going to see something There's a lot like of that. history in it. And the only other place you're going to see it is maybe in one or two one or two other people in the uh, have it in have a sunny list and robe in their collections and then the Boxing Hall of Fame. You, you know what's back here as well? Actually, no, over here. Uh, that Lawrence Taylor jersey is amazing. Oh, yeah. it's right behind Where your head. I, I, that's I'm, incredible. Yeah. That's a uh, uh, that's a rookie. Lawrence Taylor jersey that's been photo matched in the auction. Yeah, uh, ends on Friday. Has like uh, multiple repairs. This is if you want to buy, if you want to own the greatest Lawrence Taylor jersey in the world, this is the one. This jersey should be worth a hundred thousand dollars. It's not. And it, it, 
I wouldn't say it's not. I would say that it's possible that it could sell for that kind of money. The, the market hasn't yet been discovered for these more modern, uh, quote, less valuable pieces, uh, jerseys. Let's talk jerseys. That there are so many specimens out there that are just not great. They're, you know, they don't have a lot of wear. You can't photo match them. Uh, they're not from their rookie year or something like that. Those are the things that in the future are just going to be amazing. You know, these, these, this kind of stuff, you know, I watched it happen with other jerseys of more major guys, people like uh, be it Dr. J or a Johnny Unitas, uh, Joe Namath. Those jerseys can sell for a quarter million dollars. Now, that's, that's high, but some of them can. And that's going to happen eventually in, with something like this. You know, something like this could sell for 75 grand, and then you'll see it selling for 150, then 250, because this doesn't exist. I've seen a, a lot of Lawrence Taylor jerseys that are just not that great. This is the one, you know, and the one is all, there's only one or two of that quality. Yeah, I mean, this is the finest one I've ever seen. Yeah. And, and it could sell. I mean, it could, it's already at, I think, over 30,000. Yeah. I could see it selling at 50. And this is really, people ask me all the time, what's the, where, where should I invest? And we talked about that before. But I've, I've told people, and I don't mean to toot my own horn. Absolutely. But I've been telling people for years. Not just telling it people, you've been doing it yourself as a collector. And I've been doing it myself. I, you know, the proof is in the pudding because that's what I collected. I collected high-end, really nice knits that show a lot of wear a lot of player characteristics. And now all of a sudden, you know, we have a Jim Palmer shirt in this auction. Yeah. I know there were several Jim Palmer knits that, that have sold in recent auctions for $20,000 or more. Now, in, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, you couldn't get $20,000 for a flannel yeah. jersey of Jim Palmer. Now all of a sudden, you know, knits are finally, people are yeah. realizing how rare a really nice George Brett jersey is. Yeah. They're also realizing how many fakes are out there. And, you know, you'll still see the fake jersey selling for three or $4,000, but a real George Brett jersey with pine tar, a uh, lot of use, pilling on it, is now 10, you, you wouldn't be able to touch one for 10000 It's now fifteen, maybe 20000 for a really yeah, nice or one. Or more, so, even the same thing yeah. with bats, you know, stuff that's really hammered of these 80s guys. Um, and the other thing that's interesting is I love the knits because the knits, knits are our era. You know, stuff from the 60s it's and 50s and 40s and 30s. That's beautiful material. But the 70s is us. So there's something about seeing, uh, you know, one of your heroes from the 70s. Like, you know, LT was like my guy when it came to football. And to see him wearing that shirt, you know, or have the shirt, and it, it brings you back to that. And there's nothing like that. Yeah, that is. It, it, that's another good point, Josh. The fact well, that. Thank you. Well, yeah, I don't say that often, but no. that's a good point. No, we're very, now, we're very supportive yeah, of each other. Yes, but but the fact that these players, like a George Brett, is now appealing to people my age and your age, and you know, because we saw him play. That's right. So you know, that, that's right. that's really it, it's tougher to sell now a Robin Roberts shirt, but it's easier to sell a George Brett shirt. So that yeah. '70s era of players is really coming into their own now. Yeah, you're seeing guys like you know, like Ted Williams stuff is not selling for you know what it was because you know guys that saw ted williams play they're yet there's certain athletes certain stars they're so huge that they uh transcend uh their era uh, yeah. guys like jackie robinson uh mickey mantle and of course babe ruth so it's almost like that stuff you can put it into another category i think you're going to be able to do that in the end with wayne gretzky you're going to be able to do that with bobby or certain certain athletes are very special you got something dylan devin Dylan's gone. Man, oh man. Uh, from Sorry. Lane Clark, we have a question about a lot in the audience. Lane, yeah. Uh, lot 223, how do you feel the 1924 Babe Ruth real photo postcard uh, uh, from 1924 compares to other real photo cards that have been sold for big money in the past? Well, the other real – mind if I take this? No, go ahead. It's your special. The, 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 the other stuff that I've seen that's gone for big money is generally the Negro League material. Uh, that's the really big dollars. Uh, the Leland's Giants postcard uh, with uh, Rube Foster in the center there. Or I think actually think he's on the end, uh, which is one of my favorites. We actually own that. It's the name of the firm, the Leland's Giants. Uh, um, that's gone for big money. Uh, I forget the number, uh, 35000 or even more. We sold one that wasn't that great. It was actually really, really rough. That came from the 
foster estate. Yes, remember? yes. Not that long ago. Yeah. It was actually, yeah, it came out of a scrapbook or it had some yeah. damage to it. Yeah. It wasn't well, quite. Well, what did we quite, get for? Like 15 or 18,000? 15 000. or 18,000. Yeah. I think if you had a nice one, right now, it would bring 50 or more, right? Yeah. If you had a, yeah. And oh, the other one that's, of course, that's going for big money now is the 1915 uh, uh, Red Sox team photo with Ruth. With Ruth. Because it's considered a card. You know, people are now. I think PSA has done a lot to help that market because That's now the postcards are put into the to the uh, registry sets, the player sets. So now that postcard, that 1915 Red Sox postcard, is part of the Babe Ruth registry. Yes. Which um, you know anybody who's putting together a set of Babe Ruth cards needs that card, and that's one of the toughest. I mean, I've probably seen uh, what five of them, if that. six of them. Yeah, I think. I the, remember we had a beauty a long yeah, time ago. I, right? I think the same one is revolving. I think it's been sold. It's the price has gone up so much. That when it hit, originally they were selling for like 10,000, 12,000, then they were like like 20,000 and then 30,000. Now I think they're close to 100 now for the right one. Yeah, for one. And, and I remember when those, remember when we could buy those cards? You could buy one if you you'd see one up at the Boston show. You could buy it for, yeah, less than five grand. Five grand. Yeah. yeah. That was three the, to five. The, the high retail was 5,000. And I remember we had a raw one that was really nice. It would have graded probably, and I, I don't know what happened to it, but it would have graded. I have no clue. We lost it. I but think. Uh, yeah. But it would. Uh, I it sent would, it. I, I put a stamp on it. Yeah. Sent it out to you. It would have graded probably a five or a six, yeah, if amazing. I remember correctly. Yeah. And I, I don't know what the highest grade it is, but I think it might be like a five. So the question is, where does the the, the Dunsmuir uh, card sell for? And uh, uh, I said in the copy, it's the yeah, only one. I don't think that's correct. I think there are a couple more out there. Um, one that I definitely know of. I, I don't want to be. I'm, I didn't get around to changing the copy. I'm going to do an errata, as as Jillian would say. And uh, we're going to change that. I don't think it affects the value of the card. It's just so impossible to find. But the Dunsmere card is great. I mean, it's like a favorite of mine because you have to look at the image. It's just incredible because the entire – take a look at it. The entire crowd is posing, and they're standing behind Ruth. So it's almost like they're all taking a photo with the babe. And then the coolest thing is that the photographer who took it, he kind of went around. He even says on the back of the card you could buy uh, uh, copies of this or blow-ups of this. It's almost like a means to sell uh, um, a portrait of yourself standing with the babe, and he did a couple hundred of them at a time. So it was pretty cool. So there is another one now. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, I found that out last night. Thank you, Jeff, by the way. I wonder, um, I wonder what the condition's like on that one. Oh, it's beat. Oh, it is? No, okay. I don't know. Oh, There's probably a nice one out there. I know there's a beater out there. And I, supposedly there's a nice one and a beater, but there's a few out so there. It's, so like three known total, maybe. Maybe more. Who knows? Okay. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, we got it. Oh, no, wrong one. No, there's the right one. one. Yeah. Take it out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's on top. Yeah. Here, you hold it up. You know, oh, thank you. Know you. I, I get to do it. the holding up. Yeah, you can so. see it right there. It's really an amazing card. Uh, let me try to get it. Look, the whole crowd is like stopped. And they're all, you can't see the detail, but they're all looking right at the camera. Watch the birdie and pose with the babe. 1924. Of course you know. And it's Dunsmere, California, and they still have the stands up where the babe is standing. And I did an interview with uh, Amanda Rose up in uh, Medford, Oregon. And we did an interview and I didn't realize until after that she was standing in front of the stands right there at where the babe stood a hundred, almost a hundred years ago. And that was one of the coolest things I ever did. If you go on Facebook, look at Amanda Rose, you'll see the article. It's really great. It's on my personal Facebook. It's on our Facebook as well. You know, what's really interesting. It, yeah. It's a really nice postcard. Beautiful. I mean, the photo's crisp. The yeah. clarity is great. Um, and, I, and I was wondering, I was trying to figure out why is it graded a two? We had it graded by SGC. Uh, it's uh, who it's, we, you know, we totally endorse. Yeah. Love SGC. Love SGC. MPSA, Dave Borman, MPSA. But We um, love the, the two grading companies are really great. But um, Those two. SGC has graded a two. And I'm trying to find, is there a crease or something in it? But you know what? It's probably there's a, there's maybe a, a back- small mark here. Oh. There's a small mark. Now that's really where, circle. yeah, and that's why that's, that's why it's graded a two. But uh, I mean, if you just looked at this thing, you'd say this has to be like a five or a six at least. Do you know what the mark is? That's the person who owned the postcard. The probably. guy who owned the postcard circled his face on on there in like with a green circle to show yeah. this is me. It would probably it would probably come off too. It might. It would probably come off. But that's amazing if you think about it. But it's I would a leave neg- it on there. It's a negative that it has this mark of character. So that's where the grading system can be. But that's not going to affect it. If that was an eight, I think it would result for the same money. 
Well, we don't know what it's been sold for yet. I think it's up to like 16,000, something like that. It's got a long way to go. Devin, what do you got? Nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, let's see what we got. Well, we should talk about a couple other pieces in the auction because it does end this week. You're right. What do you got? Um, what's interesting that's over there? We got well, this. You know what? You got to bring this down. Because oh, yeah, I can talk about that. You don't even know where he's getting. No, I, I'm, he's handing me something. I'm waiting. Oh, for that? You. No, this is more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what are we in competition over who's got the better item? Yes. Well, Wait. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the competition just for a second about between us. What? Try to tell us about that. We've been we've been partners for how many years? A long time. Yeah, we twenty five years. Yeah, twenty five years. But we've known each other since since a you were a kid time. and I was Probably, a little uh, older. Thirty, thirty something. Years. Uh, I knew you when you were seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Right. And or, or or maybe even yeah, about seventeen. So I know yeah. you're. That's it. And uh, what was that twenty three years? Forty thirty three years? Yeah, it's insane. So. Uh, uh, now, let, talk a little bit about the competition between us. What is the well, competition? we have a friendly competition. That's right. We have a friendly competition. But it's, it's and, friendly, but yeah. it's, it's, it's fairly intense. It is. It is. That's why we wanted Jordan to sit in between us. So we don't <laughs> yeah. fight all the time tonight, but we, we're getting along. We don't fine. fight. But, um, no, there's a, there's a friendly competition, and I'm more, I'm more subdued about the stuff I find. I still want the rec recognition. It feels good. And I love showing people the stuff that I find that I bring into the office. But, um, you know, Josh is the same way, but he's more blatant with it. I'm, I'm more, oh, you yeah. know, subdued about it. It's not that I don't want the recognition. It's just I don't really seek it out. I don't know. I don't go over the top with it. You don't think, but you're, Josh, you don't think you're worthy of it. Do I don't you? think I'm worthy of it. Yes. Which is but insane. that's a whole different conversation. Oh, uh, we can have you know, that conversation. A, we just had no, it. That's a psychological conversation. That's okay. So we don't need that. My captain does not – appreciate himself as much as I appreciate him. <laughs> well, Is that thank true? You, thank you. John. And I don't appreciate thank myself you. as much as you appreciate thank me. You. Thank you. So um, we support each other. He doesn't, so he doesn't want to get personal. Yeah. He, we support each other. And that's why this has worked as a relationship. We've had our ups and downs, of course, but this relationship has worked for 33 years because we support one another. And also we really get off on showing the other guy, look what I got. And to show the other guy, and it, it's like, we're excited to show the other guy and say, hey, look what I got, or to find an item that the other guy likes and say, hey, you can have that or this or that. Anyone can take any – if we own it, anyone, either of us can take home anything they want, and then there's no question because we're – and it always works. It always, it always works. Out. You've always been able you to always take better out. stuff, though. I'm stupid. I, I, take the I know. Stuff. Well, you take that non-sports oh, stuff. Oh, it's terrible. I've been telling you for years to take the nits and stuff that I, you know, Oh, I know. He's going to this he's right. going to have like a uh, billion dollars. I'm going to I'll be on the street. It'll be terrible. But you love it, and that's the main thing. Yes. And back to the competition like today uh Josh was calling me over to his desk and I knew he wanted to show me something, <laughs> but I was in the middle of counting some cards and doing some stuff. Counting cards. Counting cards. <laughs> Not that kind of counting cards, but I was in the middle of counting cards and uh for a set and he kept calling me. I knew he had something great to show me. I forget what it was. It was the, the football. Uh, it was a football. Yeah. Can you get football. that football on my football desk, please? Just up. But speaking of football, yeah, show us that. we have a really nice collection of Pittsburgh Steelers jerseys in the auction. The majority of them, they're all in a section from the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a few. Let's out, you, in see, there. you see, he just glossed over that. These are consigned directly by the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers. We have a relationship with the Steelers. Actually, Hef does. I've been up there. I deal with them, but they don't like me. They like Hef. That's not true. No, I know. I'm kidding. Yeah, all right. But they're, they're great. We love dealing with them. They are an organization first class. And, and the fact that we are, you know, able to, uh, uh, you know, been bestowed this, this honor is just amazing to us. Yeah, it is quite incredible. And, uh, you know, the stuff that they have in their archives um, is, is all, you know, first class. So this is just, I just wanted to say, I told Shakespeare, this is not the best Steelers jersey in the auction. But it it's is a, it's the coolest because the oh. guy's name was Buzz Nutter. But I wanted to say that. I just wanted to say Buzz Nutter. <laughs> he wasn't the best player ever. See, this is There's childish. a Lynn. This is this is childish. <laughs> See, this is no. this is what Hap has been doing for 33 years. Is he he is entertained by Jillian is laughing her ass off. That's right, Jillian. It is funny. Yeah, right? uh, uh, he, he's you know uh, if someone's got a weird name, it's like that's what makes him laugh. You know, it's like uh, you know what it is. It's like Hef's like a a, a a child, a baby in a in a bassinet, and you like you 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 ring your keys like that, and that's what yeah. gets him excited. But so if is, somebody's called Buzz Nutter, he's like it he's is, off. and he was a decent player, Buzz Nutter, and it's uh it's a 1961 to 64 style. 
um, incredible. Be before the jerk, before the Steelers sold a few of these, this style, they were pretty much non-existent. So the Steelers control, I don't know how many they have, if they have any more, um, you know, but this is a really cool jersey. And you buy can, this stuff. You can bid on it right now. This thing, I'm looking at it now. It has repairs oh, all over it. Oh, it's beautiful. If you could um, see it, the gold is just like, yeah. it, it glows. I mean, the, this, the, it's in perfect condition. It's just, but it's, it's not in perfect condition because it's got great wear. Yeah. Yeah, that's but it's a 10. I mean, if you were looking at it from a standpoint of grading a jersey, yeah, and not grading a card, of course, because of different standards, but yeah. grading a jersey with the wear and everything on it, the repairs, uh, the fact that there are no, you know, there's no abuse, there's no stains, anything like that. Uh, but it's not it. from the football field, yeah, it makes it a 10. So. But it's not in mint condition, perfect. it's it's hammered, which is what you want, you know, it's been it's been worn, and there are these wonderful little repairs all the way through it. And here, the, even the, the uh, sleeves are cut off. Yeah. But that's what you want because that's the way it was meant to be. It, this literally was taken off the field, played with for probably a season or two, taken off the field, repaired, 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 put it back, taken off, and then in the locker room, and in the Steelers archive, never to be seen again until this day. Well, it, it was done months ago. <laughs> All right, one second. This is the ball, by the way. This is the ball that uh, – I'll tell a quick story about this. This is the ball that I got uh, when I was up in Buffalo, um, and I was really excited to show it down because this is amazing. Yes. It's a, uh, it's actually a uh, official AFL ball, uh, not Joe Foss, which you normally see. It's uh, what's this guy's name? I forget. Milt Woodard, um, and he was only the uh, the commissioner for a few years, a couple of years, something like that. So his, these balls are much rarer. But what's great about this is I, I got this from the guy who caught this in the stands in 1967. How do I know that? Because I know the guy, and I know his friend, and they told me the story, had the program. I can't find the program right now, but he, I'll tell you the story. Uh, uh, I put a big group of stuff together that he had. He's also a collector. And he went to the game in 1967 versus, I think it was the Chargers, and he they missed the field goal, and he caught it. So he took it home, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but he told me that if you wanted to catch a field goal and hold on, or catch a ball and hold on to it, you would get destroyed. They would, oh, here comes, leave it in the, oh, that's fine. Take it out. So, yeah, this is the game. And he put a little note on it. Caught the field goal. Caught the miss. What does it say? Uh, Chargers 37, Bill 17, caught this field goal. And I'm getting a letter from him to state this. Anyway, so I found this ball, like, in a box. It was, the box was over here, and I was a little tired, so I wasn't really rummaging around too much. And I pulled all these crummy footballs out of a box, and then this I saw, like, sticking out. And I was like, oh, I knew right away. So anyway, and I made a big pile. It was thousands of dollars. And I, he said, uh, and I, I made him the offer. And I said, well, how much without the ball? And I said to him, you mean this ball? He goes, I go, oh, no, 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 no. no. That, that's going to be in the deal. And if we don't get the deal, I'm still taking it home. I was kidding. <laughs> so, uh, but I said that. So we made a deal. And in the end, it was funny because, you know, we were friendly and, you know, it was fine. And, I'm, and he, go, I go, he goes, and I got the program. I said, oh, let me see the program. He said, no, I'm not showing you the program. No, you'll take it. So anyway, so we had a great time. We walked out. I'm coming. I'm going to go back and get the, the rest of the stuff. And uh, I'm walking out the door, and he goes, here you go. And he, hand, he hands me this program. Thank you for coming. You know, he gave it to me. So everything works out. It was really nice. It's a good story behind it. Thank you. Excellent story. That'll be on our next auction. Yes. The uh, Spring Classic. Spring, spring classic. classic. But yes. you want to focus on the auction coming up. It's this weekend. Friday closes at 10. Do we have any more time? Do we want to have another question? You getting tired? We got to, we got to ask Devin. We got two more. Two more questions. Devin. Let's okay. go. Uh, this one's from Brian Shiley. Uh, what are your thoughts on signed Dale Earnhardt Sr. memorabilia? Uh, I know someone who has a signed trunk lid from Dale Sr. from his crash at Pocono. Oh, wow. If it was 85 or 86. Um, I think, I mean, there's such a, there's such a, a big fan base out there. There's so many people that are still – Dale Earnhardt fans, and then with Junior, you know, coming coming through the ranks and and take sort of taking over for his father. There's there's a special. There, there always will be a special place for Dale Earnhardt in racing. You know, he is pretty much the guy. And uh, where you know, where would where would he be in the scale um, of, of the top guys? Like who NASCAR, as far as popularity, number one. Collect. Let's talk about collecting popularity. Collecting popularity. I would say uh, he's probably NASCAR. Now, now just realize NASCAR is not nearly as old as, you know, in the, you know, champ car. Yeah. The, the other forms of racing. 
But um, I would say in NASCAR history, he's got to be number one as far as collectability also. Wow. The value um, of his stuff. Um, there's, I mean, you, you can make a case for Richard Petty, but I think – that's a, that's a different era and, and uh, a little bit different, a little bit earlier, but I would say I like the, I like the know, petty stuff. Yeah. The petty stuff is tremendously rare name. too. Um, the petty stuff is very desirable. You know, Richard Petty's still living great person, really nice guy. Many months and uh, just really wonderful. So, you know, really nice guy, but I would say the future for, that was the question, Devin, right? The mm -hmm. future, the future of, um, of dealer and her stuff. He did sign a lot of stuff. He did sign a lot of stuff. I think the, the future for it, if you're going to invest in it, I don't think it's a great necessarily investment. I would right. say if you're a Dale Earnhardt fan and you have a trunk lid or something signed of his, uh, it's worth money. It's probably, it's worth thousands. Uh, is it ever going to be worth 25,000? Probably not within our lifetimes, but um, there would have to be know, a huge jump in the market overall. Because right. That's right. not the yeah. rarest and the best piece. Yeah. And I'll just say it's worth, it's worth thousands because it is a, a piece of his car. It is signed. Right. But um, you know, it's not going to be uh, along the lines of twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars. His right. his race suits, some of them have sold for in the twenty twenty-five range. You know, the suits that he wore signed. What would you buy um, if you had a, a a wish list? What what would be the piece of Earnhardt? I'd want a helmet and a suit. Oh, the helmets and, and are they've amazing. Been, they've, they've been out there. Some of his helmets. You have to be careful because there are replica helmets out there that were made just like the ones that he used, and you'll see them. Uh, sometimes you'll see them unused and people sell them as unused, which is cool. And then sometimes you'll see people who uh, doctor them up and make them look used and then sell them, try to sell them as used. And those, are, those are the people we don't like, no. the people that do that kind of crap. Yeah. But, um, you know, so I guess it answers that the investment quality of Bernhardt is probably as good as anybody in NASCAR. But uh, again, buy it because or keep it because you like it. If you don't like it, then sell it and get, right. the, get the few thousand, you know, a couple thousand dollars. But if you like it, hold on to it. And yeah. um, buy, it's, it's certainly not going to go down in value, I don't think. Buy what you like. Right. Uh, and then if it doesn't go up, you don't care. It doesn't hurt as much. Right. Right. Seven. Uh, and we have one more from Sean Moore. Okay, uh, Sean. What would be the ballpark value on a Michael Jordan Junior High yearbook in seventh grade? <clears throat> Is it signed? Let's assume it's not signed. It's not signed. Okay, probably not. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, it's a man. rare one. It's a rare one. It, junior year. What do they go for? About twelve, eight to twelve hundred dollars, something like that. I would say, yeah, five hundred to a thousand, yeah, somewhere in that I'm range. High. Now, if it's signed, it's a whole different ball. Twenty five hundred. Twenty five thirty five. You know, it, it, and, but that I think that market is a little stale right now. A lot. It of, is. It, yeah. Go ahead. Speaking of that, we have a Ted Williams. Um, oh my God. Uh, High school yearbook in signed. Signed. Team signed by the baseball team. What was it like? His seat is uh, junior year, I think, high school. San Diego. The, the, in San Diego, the program alone, the yearbook alone, I've never seen it before. And then it's signed by the That's team. That's actually including, a rare one. Including Williams, and I think it's at $500. Yeah, so it's insane. If people are looking for something that's a good, you know, yeah. strong investment, even the Ted Williams stuff is not what it once was, there aren't the collectors out there that there used to be. That piece is crazy. Like uh, I thought, that piece is you know, if I had a if I had to put a value on, it, I'd say that piece is a three four thousand dollar piece. Yeah, we I think, we, a, I think the I think first one five hundred bucks. The, the, there's another one that has like a red cover that we had, and I think it had multiple yes. signatures. That one for for like six thousand dollars. Yes, or remember high, that? High remember fives. that? Yeah. Well, that was the first yeah. one we ever saw. Right, it had red cover and it was yeah. spiral bound. And I, yeah, that's right. And I think it has like uh, um, uh, um, uh, multiple pictures of him doing baseball and other things. And it's just, it's a great yearbook. I got to take another look at this one that's in the auction. You should take a look too. All right. Anything else? We should probably sign off. I think, uh, I think we're good. Now we did good. Hey, I really enjoyed doing this with you. Thank you. Thank you. Have, thank Appreciate you guys. It. Craig Shakespeare was here. Thank you, Craig. And uh, 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 Tom Curran, our uh, main guy here, our director. Uh, uh, of course. Uh, oh, is Eric still here? He's not talking yeah, to us yeah, anymore. Uh, uh, of course, Devin, who did this, and of course, our special guest star, Jillian Kleindienst. And uh, uh, I'd like to say, of course, thank you to Jordan, who did a wonderful job, had to get out of here so he could go home and get back to, P to Topeka. And on that note, I think we'll go out with our closing theme. Is that okay with you, Hef? I'll leave before the theme. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you something. Now, I, whenever I play piano for half, you know, I'll play, sit down, I'll play a the song. The piano's fine. I don't mind the piano. It's the singing. It's, it's the singing and the keyboard. 
they just don't go together. Like your voice and that keyboard. Your voice and the piano are fine. Do you still have a piano at your house? What are you talking about? Of course I have the piano in my house. No, I know you got rid of one. I got rid of one because I had three. I got rid of two, actually. Okay. But my main piano was Well, can you there. bring the piano in? This was a show about sports stuff, all about sports stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh knows all about sports stuff. Cap knows all about sports stuff. Even Jordan knows all about sports stuff, all about sports stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I hope you really like the show. Love doing this. Thank you so much. Don't forget, the auction closes Friday. Take a look. It's an amazing thing. You will never see things like this again. Enjoy what you do. This is a great, great hobby. This is a great, great business. I love what I do. I got to chill right now. This was everything I ever wanted to do, and I'm doing it. Thanks for being a part of it. Love you all. Good night.